turn on your notification bell. You will still get those information you are looking for. Thank you. Good evening, fellow televiewers on the ACN television. My name is Kapo Daniel. I am the spokesman of the Ambazonian Governing Council and allied to the IPOB of the Biafran Movement. Today, I want to come to you to react and to set the record straight concerning statement made by the lead counsel of Mazi Namdikanu, Barista Aloy Ijimako. Barista Aloy Ijimako have made statement on Twitter where he states that the Biafran people can leave Nigeria through a referendum. In that statement, he quoted the case of the Southern Cameroons, which we call Ambazonia today. He states that Atiku is a Nigerian today as a result of a referendum, and that the people of Ambazonia, that is the Southern Cameroon, left Nigeria or separated from Nigeria as a result of a referendum. That is just not true. That is not accurate. I want to set the record straight and also help the Biafrians as an independent activist. So I speak now not like a spokesman of the governing council, but as an activist, my advice to the Biafran people. First, I will want to make the record straight. As a matter of fact, Ambazonia, which they used to call Southern Cameroon, did not separate from Nigeria as a result of a referendum. The referendum, on the contrary, was for Southern Cameroon to join Nigeria. An election, or you want to call it a referendum, it was actually a plebiscite. During that plebiscite, we voted to join Cameroon, the Republic of Cameroon. That resorted to Cameroon rejecting that election in the United Nations and end up annexing Ambazonia. That is why we are fighting today for our independence. So the referendum that uh, Barista Aloy is talking about was not the result of Southern Cameroon separating or seceding from Nigeria. I want to make that clear. And for the interest of the public, I want to take this opportunity to tell the truth to the Biafran people. Listen to me and listen very carefully. First, I will lay the foundation by giving you our history of separating through the ballot box. In 1949, the British Southern Cameroon, which was Ambazonia and Adamawa province or Adamawa, Adamawa in Nigeria currently, was the British Southern Cameroon, an international uh, entity with well-defined borders that were demarcated and recognized internationally and in the United Nations. We were an international entity that was attached to Nigeria by the British government under the United Nations Trusteeship Agreement. In 1950, the Nigerian constitution, because we were, part, we were governed as part of the eastern region of Nigeria, granted us the possibility to elect our members of parliament, our parliamentarian, into the eastern legislature in Enugu. The southern Cameroon, Ambazonia, elected 13 members of parliament into the eastern regional house in Nigeria. After three years, all of our parliamentarians, they decided to declare benevolent neutrality and withdraw from Nigerian parliament. All of them, 13 parliamentarians from southern Cameroon, from Ambazonia, withdrew from Nigerian legislature. As a result, the British government saw that Nigeria have lost the legitimacy to govern Ambazonia. So they were forced to grant us autonomy. And the next year, that is in 1953, we now voted to form our own government and elect our prime minister, Mr. Endele. That is how we separated from Nigeria. The, so Ambazonia, so Southern Cameroon, separated from Nigeria, not because of the referendum. We separated because our elected officials who represent our territory withdrew from the Nigerian legislature in Enugu. Because of that, the Nigerian government lost 
credibility, they lost legitimacy to govern our territory. They did not have any authority to govern our territory. So the British government was then forced to give grant full autonomy to our territory. Due to that full autonomy, an election was organized in southern Cameroon for us to elect our own government and form our own government and create our own legislature. We created our legislature. We elected our prime minister and he has the official and proper mandate to govern our territory for four years, from 1954. After that four years, a democratic election took place in Ambazonia and a new prime minister was elected. Because of this self-governance, the British government and the United Nations decide that our territory can become independent. That is why we had a referendum. Actually, it was called a plebiscite where we decided that we were given a choice to vote to join Nigeria or to join Cameroon. In that vote, in the United Nations General Assembly, after our people have voted to choose to join Cameroon, the Cameroon government voted against the United Nations uh, Resolution 1806 that's supposed to grant Ambazonia unity with Cameroon because their intention was to, to recolonize our territory. That is why we are fighting today. So to the Biafran people, the issue about referendum, from my interaction with the leadership of the IPOB when Mazinam Dikano was a free man, it was all a rallying point to governize the people of Biafra to fight for their independence and their freedom. It was never an objective. Let nobody deceive you that you can have independence through a referendum. Referendum is independent in essence because when Southern Sudan was about to be granted her independence, the United Nations therefore granted them a referendum. Nigeria will never grant Biafra independence through a referendum. So, right now, the Nigerian government sees the issue of a referendum as a tool to pacify the Biafran resistance so that you cannot make the necessary move that will attend, that will enable your territory to become independent. They are now giving you your medicine. So referendum, which was to be used as a rallying point to governize the Biafran people and make them ready to fight for their freedom, is now being actively used by the Nigerian government to pacify the Biafran resistance and move towards independence. That is why the Nigerian court have accepted cases for referendum. Of course, those cases will never be won. It will just go on and on and on and buy time for the Nigerian government to crush all the leaders and all the armed fighter, all the freedom fighters in Biafra. My advice to the Biafran people is that if you want freedom, you must accept the price for freedom. If you want freedom, you must understand that any election in Biafra gives the Nigerian government, whether you like it or not, a mandate to continue Nigerian rule over Biafra. For you to be free, you must delegitimize Nigerian rule over your territory by stopping and banning all Nigerian election. This coming presidential election is the biggest blow to Biafran freedom. If the Biafran people are wise, you will listen to your people who are asking you not to participate and to outright ban this election. Because of corruption, it will be impossible for Biafran senators and legislatures and their governors to withdraw themselves from the Nigerian constitutional framework of a government. It will be impossible. The only way you can delegitimize Nigerian rule is to ban election, arrest all their elective, elected officials, and make sure that Nigeria cannot create a semblance of legitimacy over Biafra. Then you would have contested Nigerian rule, Nigerian legitimacy, and give your people a chance to be considered, their, their aspirate, for their aspirations to be considered. Because so long as you elect senators elect governors whether the election pool is 10 percent 20 percent you have given the nigerian government another year to keep you in the zoo so for you to be free your biggest enemy are the legislature the people within biafra who represent nigeria 
if you can get rid of them, if you can stop them, then you would have set up Biafra in a position where the issue of independence can be considered. Until then, whatever you are doing is just an agitation. It's just an agitation. You cannot have freedom through agitation. Freedom have a price. If you want independence, you must be ready to pay the price. To delegitimize Nigeria, you need to actually liberate Biafra from Nigerian administrators. Kick all of them out. That is the only choice. That is the only choice. So copy from us. I speak to you as an independent activist. We have an obligation. I have an obligation to Mazi Namdekanu to tell you the truth and to advise you. Now that he is in jail, there is no way you should expect anything from him or any validation or any policy coming from him. And any leader who does not tell you the truth and keep on preaching this issue of referendum, they will have the best support. They will even be accommodated by the Nigerian government because it serves the Nigerian government to talk about this destruction of a referendum. It will never come unless you win independence. So winning independence will give you a referendum. Asking for referendum is like putting the 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 the, the, the cat up in front of the horse. It doesn't work that way. Freedom is not free. You have to pay the price. You have to go to war. This time, not a conventional warfare because Nigeria has demonstrated the strength to be able to contain Biafra through conventional warfare. But through guerrilla tactics, that is, is geared towards delegitimizing Nigeria, kicking, in, kick it, kicking out all her, her representatives and her administrators, will make sure that Biafra is ungovernable and that Nigeria will lose credibility and legitimacy to govern Biafra. And the Biafran people by themselves can start constituting themselves to govern and arrange their territory the way they want. That is the only way you can win. You cannot win Nigeria through conventional warfare, but definitely you can win Nigeria through resistance and through guerrilla warfare. If the Taliban could win the Americans, that may not be a perfect example, but I can guarantee you Nigeria cannot defeat Biafra through guerrilla warfare and through resistance against Nigerian rule. Fight for your freedom. God bless you.